Man has hunted since the beginning of time. What began with crude weapons and animal images scrawled on cave walls has developed into a multi-million dollar industry. From the Tilton Hiltons to the mansions in the marsh, we hunt and we cook. Everything from rabbits and raccoons to deer and ducks while learning about the passion of sportsmen through the ages. Man's love affair with hunting is really not about the kill, but how to prepare a sumptuous wild game banquet after the hunt. Now get that camouflage apron and join me, Chef John Foles, for another Taste of Louisiana. Funding for After the Hunt with Chef John Foles is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Day is dawning on the Mississippi River and the sun is shining on Baton Rouge. Attractions, shopping, food, and southern hospitality you know and love. Go BR and go brighter and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vacation planning guides are available at louisianatravel.com. You wait all year for your vacation. Don't sleep through it. in the New Orleans Express right there. Isn't he great, huh? Yeah. huh? <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining me in Sportsman's Paradise for another edition of A Taste of Louisiana. I'm just absolutely thrilled to have all of you here in the audience with us today, especially y'all back there. Uh, and, uh, of course, to all of our viewers back home, <clears throat> thanks for joining us right here in the kitchen as well. Uh, you, you really can't be here in person today. The studio is just absolutely packed with great folks. The kitchen is overfilled. Anyway, y'all, again, our kitchen musicians over here, Bobby Lanera and the New Orleans Express, they're our house band. Give them another hand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we, we really need to do something about the wardrobe. Let's get the wardrobe department in here, huh? I'll do something about the wardrobe. Look at that hat Bobby's got on. I saw some old pictures in 1950 of, like, in the Philippines, a prisoner of war camp. And I think he was there. I think Bobby was there. <laughs> Y'all, I have two words for the audience today. Wild turkey. No, 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 we're not drinking it, we're cooking it, huh? <laughs> Wild turkey is one of the most flavorful meats you'll ever taste when properly prepared. You can see that I have mounted, I have mounted wild turkey right here on my kitchen wall. Look how beautifully it's presented up there. Remember that taxidermy such as this is real art. And we're going to meet one of Louisiana's most celebrated taxidermy artists. Uh, let's take a look at his work. After all the work and adventures that lead to a kill, many hunters want to preserve the memory and show off their hunting skills with a trophy mount. Just as hunting is an art, so is taxidermy. You want to make the animal as more than real to life. The first step in bringing that mount to life, so to speak, is proper treatment in the field. Birds or animals that have been shot in obvious areas, have damaged feathers, or have bled profusely should not be mounted. While some minor damage can be repaired or disguised, the more intact the animal, the better. Depends, if you kill a deer, just when he skins it out, just let it cool off and then put it in a plastic bag and put it in an ice chest with ice around it and pull the plug on it. Now as far as birds, you want to keep them dry and put them, everything in plastic even fish, everything in plastic. Avoid skinning or gutting small animals, birds, or fish, but rather freeze them whole. For large animals, do not be skimpy with the amount of skin you include. If you're planning to mount a deer, provide the taxidermist with the whole head and shoulders and additional neck skin. You should always avoid wrapping game in paper or newspaper, as this can have a staining effect on the mount. 
Taxidermists, whether hobbyists or professionals, must have a federal migratory bird permit. The fine for being caught without one, 10,000 bucks with the possibility of up to five years in prison. Taxidermists can be certified to work on fish, birds, mammals, or reptiles, but only a few are certified in all four categories. For every ribbon it gets, it's like a point, and you have to have a certain amount of points to get to be your certification. And I'm the only one in Louisiana that has all four, fish, birds, mammals, and reptiles. Reference materials such as photographs of the animal in action, reference books with up-close views, or even hunter's notes from the field are crucial for most taxidermists. The slightest adjustment to the turn of a head or a ruffle of a tail feather can make that mount more lifelike. Most taxidermists will tell you that taxidermy is not a difficult skill to master, but does require time, attention to detail, and precision. Judging from these mounts, I'd say that Louisiana has some talented wildlife artists in the area of taxidermy. Bobby Lanero over there, y'all, he's, I tell you, he does a great job in the kitchen, doesn't he? Huh? I can't cook without Bobby like back there. Thank you so much. Good right? kitchen music, absolutely. <laughs> Did y'all hear we were giving away a car or something today? Huh? <laughs> why, 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 are so many, why are so many people here? Y'all must heard we were giving away a big giveaway today, huh? Uh, a couple of good folks to mention right here at the kitchen counter. If they're sitting here... They're very special, y'all. First of all, Jimmy Riley from Giles Island right here. The manager of Giles Island. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Jimmy, you have, uh, you have all the gang behind you, huh? Yeah, this is most all of us right uh, here. Boy, I could have gone to Giles Island today and killed anything I wanted on that guy. <laughs> They're all here. Nobody's watching tonight. Nobody's watching it yeah, today. Yeah, but you got to be able to hit them. Y'all got to be <laughs> <laughs> I could have snuck up clothes probably today. <laughs> right next to Jimmy, y'all, one of the states, if not the nation's top taxidermist, he's from home of Louisiana, Bill Audemont, right here. Bill Audemont, huh? <laughs> Bill, it's um, so nice to have you here with us today. I know you brought some of your own uh, your own uh, uh, pieces, which uh, and the ribbons, y'all, you know what the ribbons indicate, right? No? Huh? You know what it means? Yeah. Huh? He's, uh, he's high price. Uh, oh, yeah. A man with that many ribbons? Uh, you better be ready to pay a little something to get a man like that. Kind of like eating with meat. You know? Huh? I'm going to get me a little, uh, you notice my pot smoking here? I'm going to put a little buttery flavored oil in here. Y'all, you know what we're cooking today? We're cooking wild turkey. Y'all with me? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Look at here. Huh? That's the one I missed right here. Look at that. <laughs> All right, y'all, let me tell you. Uh, uh, one of the great, great dishes of, uh, of turkey comes from the Roosevelt Hotel in New Orleans, Louisiana, and it goes way, way back. The Roosevelt is a famous hotel. The Blue Room was so famous during World War II. They made a dish that always started Thanksgiving Day and went all the way through the holidays, and that was a dish called turkey and oyster poulet. It was a sauce made with the cooked turkey and, of course, I, I won't say leftovers. I mean, whatever was left from these big buffets, they would then make a nice sauce. So I'm going to start off. They always started by taking ham because ham was left from Thanksgiving as well. And I have a little platter right here with some nice slices of fresh-baked uh, New Orleans French bread. And I'm going to put a couple of slices of ham, as they did at the Roosevelt, right over uh, the bread, yeah, this looks pretty good, huh? This looks, this uh, little man as you're done, I know, huh? Uh, put another slice of ham on there, John, throw me one. I know what you're saying to yourself. There you go, that one's, uh, that one's for you in a little bit, okay? So, now the ham is there. Now, look at the platter, y'all. I have, uh, first of all, oysters here. The cooked turkey. Now, of course, if you have wild turkey in your freezer, please watch the piece I'm going to do in a minute with Jimmy, and we're going to, you just take that, whatever's left, if any, dice it up, and this is perfect for that. Make use of that wild turkey. If you kill it, eat it, y'all. That's what I say. If you kill it, eat it, right? Okay, I have my onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic here. I'm going to throw a little fresh butter in the pot, y'all ready? Even though I have a lot in there already, this is turkey poulet. <laughs> huh? 
You know what I mean? When now people say, well, what does the word poule actually mean? I think it means extremely fattening. I think is what it means. So I have my butter down in the pot. I'm going to move the oysters out of the way. I'm going to come in with my great seasonings. Onion, celery, bell pepper, carrot. Y'all with me? Huh? You know it's got to be good, huh? I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> That's my wild turkey man over there. Huh? That was mighty weak. You give me another good one right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I was about to bring in the, the wounded goose guy again here. <laughs> okay, I have a little thyme in here. I have a little bay leaves. I'm stirring this around. And, um, uh, Jimmy, I have to tell you, as I, as I cook this, uh, this turkey here and saute this around, this gives us good memories of the ones we cooked over at Giles Island, right? They were really good. Oh, boy, that thing came out so beautiful with that... Uh, yeah. With that nice uh, 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 cheesecloth on top of it. Wait I've never wait. had it that moist before. Wait till they see it. You know why you never had it that moist before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Y'all, I, I have my great, great uh, taxidermist. I, and when I say the best in the state of Louisiana, I mean it. I know most people who hunt already know that. Now, uh... Uh, Bill, uh, talking about uh, 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 taxidermy, you mentioned that you were one of the few that had uh, uh, a license in all four categories of taxidermy. Why is that? Is it just that difficult, or is there, there are lessons that go into it that's just uh, a little bit longer than most people want to take? Why is that that you you one of the only ones, other than the fact that you're great? Well, I wanted to be. I wanted to have all four categories, in which that was birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. So, so you have them all. And how long did, was there a time period it took to get that over, uh, over the mm, years? No, I worked on it eight years on getting all four. Yeah. Now, how does one get into taxidermy? I just walked over to your, your uh, grandson over there and I asked him about, uh, asked him about it. was he in it yet? He said, no, not yet. But I have a feeling he might be working side by side. How did you, how did you get into it and at what age? Well, I started when I was 18 years old. Yeah. I had a little guy that I caught my first five-and-a-half-pound bass. And a little guy that was, uh, he was 16, and he, he wanted to do it. And I caught it the weekend before, after that, I caught another six and a half pounds. And I brought it to him, and he said it wouldn't be a year before. So I started, I asked him if he had a book, and I started with a book. So you trained yourself almost to do it, huh? Pretty much. And then I joined the um, Louisiana Taxidermy Association. They have a lot of good information and right, seminars. Sure. Well, and good. then I joined the National Taxidermy Association. Well, I want to talk a little bit about this mount you have here in a minute, but I'm going to finish the turkey poulet, y'all. I'm going to come into it with the oysters right here. Well, let, let me throw some flour in first. We're going to make a white sauce, so I have all of my onions, celery, bell pepper, garlic, all sauteed. Y'all, uh, you know, just a good white sauce, flour, picking up all the seasonings down here. You with me? Yeah. Huh? You don't seem interested in this dish. <laughs> huh? Y'all don't seem... Maybe you cook with oysters and wild turkey. Yeah, yeah, maybe y'all cook with oysters and wild turkey every night, and I'm just boring you here, huh? I don't know. It could be, huh? Could be. Well, uh, so, oh, great, fresh Louisiana oysters in season. Beautiful right now. Now I'm going to come into here with the turkey. Look at, look at this, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Huh? Don't, uh, don't, don't just think you're going to walk up to a grocery store and uh, get this good flavorful wild turkey. That takes, uh, that takes uh, some hard work to get a wild turkey. I know. Huh? <laughs> Now, I was good, though, wasn't I, Jimmy? Huh? You were good at it. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy said the reason I didn't get a turkey was that my cell phone was ringing too much. Huh? <laughs> All right, now the turkey stock right into it, right there. The heavy whipping cream, you with me? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the Worcestershire sauce, y'all got it? Huh? The white wine? Huh? Oh. I, t I tell you what, those French Catholics, boy, they, huh? huh? Uh, you notice how they all sitting in the back rowing me yelling, huh? Uh, <laughs> Y'all, I have a part of it already done. Let's come on over here, and I'm going to put the, uh, oh, I don't know if y'all can smell this or not, but I'm going to take big ladles full of it. Look at that. Right over the ham, right over the, uh, oh, right over the bread, right over the French bread. You with me? Huh? 
Oh, I wish y'all could taste this. I'm going to come on right back here and put it next to Jimmy. And y'all, while you take a look at this, I want you to uh, travel with me for a moment to beautiful Giles Island and watch this guy and I cook a wild turkey. It was fascinating. Here in the kitchen at Giles Island, again, right outside of Natchez, just an absolutely beautiful, I'm going to say, hunting estate. Uh, I, I'm standing here with the uh, general manager, Jimmy Riley. How you doing, Jimmy? Doing great. Thanks so much for having us in your kitchen. And, of course, Jay Campbell, our corporate executive chef from our company, is here helping with this. And we're doing wild turkey today. In fact, this is the home of some of the greatest wild turkey in the United States. Why, why is it that... There's so many wild turkeys here at Giles Island. Believe it or not, they weren't always here. I think somewhere in the 1970s, Louisiana introduced the wild turkey to an adjoining piece of property just north of us, and they spread over the, and over they the decades they, and, and they, they got over. here. But they love it, they're not leaving. <laughs> well, let me tell you what we're doing. We have a, a little bit onion, celery, bell pepper, because I'm making a stuffing for this wild turkey. I'm going to throw some crawfish down into it because this is a crawfish stuffing, and I'm going to let Jay kind of work with this a little bit and play around. I just cannot get over the size of that bird. Let me show you what we did with it. We do have to treat a wild turkey a little bit differently. We're brining it, and the brine contains salt, bay leaves, brown sugar, sage, garlic, thyme, basil, a little bit clove, and two gallons of water, and it's been sitting in there for 24 hours. So why don't you pull that big bad bar? I want to show everybody the size. This is a wild turkey from Giles Island, y'all. Take a look at this thing. You can't buy that in a supermarket, do you hear me? Uh, Jimmy, you can put it right down in here. Look at the, look at the breast on that thing. Now, the, the brine is gonna add about 15 to 20% additional seasoned liquid to the bird, making it just a little bit uh, uh, more juicy and tender on the inside and uh, on that breast right there. And of course, you, you have to treat the cooking just a little bit different. So I'm putting just a little salt pepper, granulated garlic, and of course, this is going to be stuffed with this nice stuffing. So, Jay, you have the, uh, uh, all of the crawfish and all of that ready to go, right? Oh, okay, y'all, so, 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 Jimmy, look at this beautiful bird. I've taken the crawfish. I'm adding cornbread to it. I'm making a cornbread crawfish stuffing. I'm going to add a little uh, a turkey stock to it. And look how beautiful I've stuffed this bird all the way with the stuffing. This is what it looks like, y'all, when it's all done, the, the crawfish stuffing. This turkey is full of stuffing. It's about 20 pounds. Jay, you ready to go into the oven with it? 350 degrees. After an hour, I'm going to cover it with cheesecloth the way the people did back in the 1800s, and I'm going to baste the butter and the cheesecloth that'll hold it in. And after about three hours, Jimmy and I will be out of the woods. We're eating turkey here at Giles Island. All right, Jay, get that turkey out of the uh, oven right there and put it here. Uh, Y'all, it's been four hours. The breast uh, uh, temperature of this bird is 186, and the internal stuffing temperature is somewhere around 160 or 70. Jimmy, we have a turkey here, huh? Yeah, it's a big one. Now, we put the, the, the cheesecloth on top of the wild bird. Look how beautiful that is as we pull that cheesecloth off. Isn't that great? Look how gorgeous that is. And, Jay, why don't you take it off, and, uh, and why don't you put it right on the cutting board here. Uh, the cheesecloth allows the basing that we've been putting on all during the cooking process to stick onto the bird and retain that moisture. And remember, this is a wild bird, 20 pounds of it. Okay, Jimmy, the first thing I want you to do is get down and get some of that crawfish. Just dig down in there and get that crawfish stuffing out of there. Can you get, just get a big spoon? Oh, <laughs> look at that right there. And of course, y'all, uh, we can just uh, go on to that, oh, look at that breast right there. Oh, <laughs> Can you, uh, can you see that? I gotta spin that turkey around okay. so you can, look, 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 look how juicy. There you go, Jimmy, you try that. Anyway, y'all, that's it right there. Uh, a 20 pound turkey stuffed with crawfish right here at Giles Island, the place we took the bird from. Y'all come and visit. And now here's the crawfish stuffing right there. Y'all wanna get some of that too. Oh, wow, that's a good song. I love that. Bobby Lanero, y'all, right there, huh? <laughs> now, uh, what about that turkey? What about that turkey that uh, uh, Jim and I, huh? Wasn't that beautiful? Had you ever, uh, uh, now I know we talked about this early, but had you ever cooked one with or seen it cooked with that, with that cheesecloth on top, basting it every 30 minutes to keep that, uh, 
that fat and that flavor on the bird. Huh? Yeah, I've never seen that, but it worked good. Boy, it worked as a very juicy turkey. Now, uh, um, now you, you know, I've been talking about uh, my turkey hunt. And, um, and like I said, I didn't get him, but I scared him, didn't I? Well, huh? I scared him, didn't I? You know, uh, we have a little tradition on Giles Island. Yeah. Uh, you know about the Bowie knife, right? Yeah, you know yeah, I got my Bowie knife right here, y'all. This is my Searles knife. This is made by the... Isn't that gorgeous? And when you see this, this is the best they come right here. They're not bigger, they're not better than this one well, right here. This is it, huh? No, that's not a Bowie knife. Yeah? That's a Bowie knife. <laughs> Mine's not only bigger and longer, it's heavier. So. <laughs> that's, that's, a, not, not, that's a tradition, what? We have a little tradition. You know, when I get a turkey up in there and he's in shotgun range, you know, inside 40 yards, you got two choices. Yeah. You can either blow his face off or yeah. you can run him down and catch him. <laughs> I but, tried uh, to run him down and catch him, but I missed him, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't, you didn't do either one, so. Uh, I, I, I scared him, though. I scared him. I scared him good. I bet he didn't come back for two days to that spot. No, I think he flew across the river, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so but, what's uh, up? We got a little tradition. I got to get your shirt tail. <laughs> my, that, well, this is a high, well, this is a highly priced chef jacket. Oh, my God. <laughs> Huh? Now you, no, 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 no. <laughs> so that's it? Now, the mark of a good chef, if you figure out a way to cook that thing, then... <laughs> <laughs> now, that's an actual tradition, right? They, uh, they have to cut the shirt tail off if you miss the bird. That's right. That's right. Deer, too. It doesn't matter. Deer, too? Yeah, you should. If there's something on Giles Island, we don't get him for the skinny shed, we're going to get your shirt tail. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll never get my shirt tail again. I hope I, not. I guarantee you that. I got me a new gun. Y'all heard it. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, you, Everybody, anybody ever cooked a mole or heard of a mole, huh? You know what a mole is, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mole, that great dish from the Aztec, the Inca empires, all up and down the Amazon. And a lot of people think that turkey kind of originated there, worked their way up into the, into the North American uh, area and, and almost became our national bird instead of the eagle. Can you imagine that being the national bird? We'd be saluting that. <laughs> huh? Like that, huh? Huh? Uh, Y'all with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. A, a mole is, can be a red or a, or a dark brown or a green sauce that's made with multiple spices and then put over meat into tortilla shells or something like that to create a wonderful sandwich. But it's a sauce, a really spicy, wonderful sauce. So what I have here, I want to show you on the platter, I have fresh turkey that's, uh, that's just diced into one-inch pieces. I have some onions that's already sautéing in my pot. I have slivered garlic. And then I have dried ancho, and I have some sesame seeds. I have a little clove and cinnamon. Clove and cinnamon. Think about that as a flavor spice for meat. And then a little coriander. I'm going to throw all of that into my pot right here just to uh, get a little bit more flavor going. Let me tell you what I did. I, I have a little stock that I have to put in here. And once this all cooks down a little bit, I move it to... The, uh, the food processor right here. And into the food processor, let me tell you what I put to finish this dish. I put in a little cilantro. I put in raisins. You with me? Yeah. Raisins. I put in some nice tomato sauce. Now, now, I know what you're thinking. Chocolate coming in right here next. Oh, yeah. I know what you're thinking to yourself. You're thinking to yourself, is that really good? Is that really good? So this right here would be spinned around just a little bit. You with me? And I'm just going to blend it. And then out of here, I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to go right on into my turkey pot where the turkey is. Oh, look at that, huh? Now, this could be all green. This happens to be a chocolate mole right there. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my tortilla shells, which I have right here. Um, and anybody um, interested in probably tasting this? I know I would. This is delicious. How's your, tur how's your turkey pulley? Uh, Y'all, I'm going to put a, a little bit of that right on here. 
I'm going to put a little bit of this wonderful rahash right there. And I'm going to, y'all can just stand right there for just uh, one. Y'all can sit down right there one minute. I'm going to give y'all a little bit more. And y'all, let me tell you something. The peanut butter, Bobby, I'm going to put in here. See the peanut butter? That's for me. I'm, I'm going to put it in the pot separately because I want a lot of it going in just for you. Oh, Look at that. I can't imagine what I, I can't imagine what you're thinking. Chocolate and all these different flavors in the pot. Y'all, thank you so much for being here with us today. Y'all were absolutely wonderful. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for joining us in the swamps of Louisiana. And remember that man's love affair with hunting is not about the kill or the skill. It's all about the fabulous feasts like this after the hunt. I'm going to see you next time on the Taste of Louisiana. We're eating mole, y'all, right here in Turkey Poulet. Hey, see you next you time, go. okay? Thank y'all, everybody. To purchase the After the Hunt cookbook by Chef John Foles, an After the Hunt t-shirt or program DVD, call the number on your screen. Funding for After the Hunt with Chef John Foles is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Day is dawning on the Mississippi River and the sun is shining on Baton Rouge. Attractions, shopping, food, and southern hospitality you know and love. Go BR and go brighter. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. and by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vacation planning guides are available at louisianatravel.com. You wait all year for your vacation. Don't sleep through it. <laughs>